This is GD Life at PALS with teacher Alex. The subject is GD Science and the topic Biogeochemical Cycling. Let's have a quick overview. We will talk about the water cycle, the carbon cycle and the nitrogen cycle in this presentation. So what is biochemical cycling? Everything living depends upon oxygen, nitrogen and carbon, and carbon in the atmosphere. Uh, water is also key to life on Earth. Now, will these life-sustaining sub substances ever get used up and disappear? Unfortunately, the answer to that question is no. In the following presentation, we will discuss three important cycles of matter in nature. So the substances will not run out since they are constantly recycled on Earth. There's no input of new substances in our biosphere and there is no export of these substances in our biosphere. So these substances, these important elements of life, carbon, oxygen, nitrogen and hydrogen, they continuously cycle through different parts of our planet and through ecosystems. The water cycle. The water cycle describes the continuous process of transporting water from the ocean to the atmosphere, then to the land and then returning to the oceans. The processes of evaporation, condensation and precipitation make up most parts of the water cycle. We can see this here. We have evaporation in different locations, in oceans, on lakes. The evaporated water will eventually condensate into clouds and it comes to rainfall, to precipitation in the form of rain. It could as well snow and snow getting deposited on mountaintops and snowy areas and glaciers. Another way of water entering the atmosphere um, instead of Evaporation is transpiration. Transpiration is a special form of evaporation of water at the leaves of plants. The carbon cycle. Carbon is the chemical backbone of life on Earth. Carbon compounds regulate the Earth's temperature, make up the food that sustains us and provide energy that fuels our global economy. Most of Earth's carbon is stored in rocks and the sediments. The rest is located in the ocean, atmosphere and living organisms. These are the reservoirs through which carbon cycles. Carbon moves from one storage or reservoir to another through a variety of mechanisms which we will have a look at now. These movements of carbon from one storage to another, from one reservoir to another, are called fluxes. Let's have a look at the fluxes on land in food chains. Plants move carbon from the atmosphere into the biosphere through photosynthesis. Animals that eat plants digest the sugar molecules to get energy for their bodies. Respiration, excretion and decomp decomposition releases the carbon back into the atmosphere in the form of carbon dioxide or into the soil in the forms of remains. Carbon fluxes in the oceans. The oceans play a very important role in the carbon storage as it holds about 50 times more carbon than the atmosphere. We can see that here the deep ocean has around 38,100 gigatons of carbon, whereas the atmosphere is around 750 gigatons. In the ocean we have two-way carbon exchange that can occur quickly, which happens between the ocean's surface waters and the atmosphere, and carbon may be stored for centuries at the deepest ocean depth. This carbon is cycled very slowly. Carbon fluxes in rocks and the crust. 
Rocks like limestone and fossil fuels like coal and oil are storage reservoirs that contain carbon from plants and animals that lived millions of years ago. When these organisms died, slow geologic processes trapped their carbon and transformed it into these natural resources. Erosion, for example, releases carbon back into the atmosphere very slowly. Volcanic activity can release it much more quickly. Burning fossil fuels in cars or power plants is another way this carbon can be released into the atmospheric reservoir quickly. Changes to the carbon cycle. Human activities have tremendous impact on the carbon cycle. Burning fossil fuels, changing land use and using limestone to make concrete all transfer significant quantities of carbon into the atmosphere. As a result, the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is rapidly rising. It is already considerably greater than at any time in the last 800,000 years. The ocean absorbs much of the carbon dioxide that is released from burning fossil fuels. This extra carbon dioxide is lowering the ocean's pH through a process called ocean acidification. Ocean acidification interferes with the ability of marine organisms, including corals, dungeons, and crabs and snails, to build their shell and skeletons. The nitrogen cycle. In the nitrogen cycle, nitrogen moves from the air into the soil, into living things, and back into the air. Let's start with the living things. Nitrogen enters the food chain when nitrogen compounds, mainly nitrates, are absorbed from the soil by plants. Plants convert nitrates into usable nitrogen compounds, specifically amino acids. These compounds are transferred between organisms through feeding levels, starting when primary consumers feed on the plants. can see that here nitrates are assimilated into plants and primary consumers will feed on plants and other consumers will feed on the primary consumers. Decaying plants and animals also return nitrogen to the soil with the help of nitrifying bacteria. These bacteria produce nitrates from the nitrogen compounds found in decaying matter. Nitrogen enters the soil from the atmosphere through nitrogen fixing bacteria in the soil or in root nodules of legumes. Nitrogen is returned to the atmosphere by denitrifying bacteria by converting nitrates to nitrogen gas. So let's have a look at that in the cycle here. Nitrifying bacteria change ammonium back into nitrates, which can be absorbed by plants again. Ammonium is as well produced by nitrogen fixing bacteria. These nitrogen fixing bacteria get nitrogen into the soil by, by absorbing atmospheric nitrogen and changing it into ammonium. Nitrogen fixing bacteria are as well um, located in some roots of specific plants, the legumes, they live in a very close mutual symbiosis and these bacteria allow the legume plants to grow in soils that are deprived of nitrogen. Nitrogen enters the atmosphere again due to denitrifying bacteria. These bacteria make use of nitrates and change them back into nitrogen gas. Let's have a look at some questions. Which of the following cycles is dependent upon bacteria? The water cycle, the carbon cycle, the oxygen cycle, or the nitrogen cycle? The correct answer is the nitrogen cycle, as we just saw in the previous slide. We have nitrifying bacteria, nitrogen fixing bacteria, and denitrifying bacteria. Complete the water cycle diagram using terms from our presentation. Let's start with A. In A we can see a cloud is forming. The 
cloud are tiny water droplets. When water vapor changes into liquid water, this process is called condensation. Once a lot of water is condensated, larger droplets will form and it will start to rain. The term here is not rain, but precipitation. Then water in the oceans and other large bodies of water will slowly evaporate to form water vapor in the atmosphere again. This was GD Live at PALS with teacher Alex. The subject was GD Science and the topic Biogeochemical Cycling.